everybody welcome to the Macha Man podcast this is uh, Kiran Bala Devan and Kavin J doing god's work <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, correct. That's exactly right. We're doing God's work. All of y'all should be thankful in your lives that you you get the, the and it is a privilege, ah, huh, to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I mean, okay, we released one uh, at the start of season two last week. I think it was last week. Sure, sure. Okay, so this is the 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 second part, lah. Yeah. of the story. So, uh, so all our listeners, we're getting straight into it. Yeah. We're not doing much on news for this one because mm. um, apparently, I mean, I don't know yet, but I've heard mm-hmm. that uh, there's a lot to talk about. Also, the fact that uh, Kiran was too lazy to find a matcha news. I mean, also that lah. Uh, okay, listen. So I showed up. Defla didn't have a matcha. No need lah. No need, no need. No need. Just so, no need. He he convinced me. Yeah. That somehow it was good for the show. Yeah, it was good for the show. Yeah. I. No, you just said it's God's work, right? <laughs> so if I don't have matcha news, I God, didn't say which God lah. That's the problem. Yeah, no, that doesn't matter. It's God's will. <laughs> <laughs> don't have matcha news. Okay, so we were talking about the MH370. We we found out everything that happened lah. Okay. Up to You're doing a recap of episode 1. Uh, ah, this, this is part 1. What you miss. Do, 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 do. Last time on the Macha Man. Ah, uh, so basically the plane took off. We heard a little bit about the the pilot. Mm. Okay, what what is he like and uh, the co-pilot also little bit going to get married all. Mm. Uh, and then we got a bit of okay the flight took off and then it went to uh, near Vietnam there and then it said good night Kuala Lumpur and then was never seen off again. Okay, so right? the first episode we focus on the beginnings of it mm. and how uh, from what the I whole remember, the whole investigation the the whole uh, <coughs> of how Malaysia started to handle this lah. Yes, the official story the official of what story. happened. Okay, so basically the flight disappeared and then they they looked at the South China Sea mm. and then they realized oh no it's not there and then they they saw the the fact that oh radar says he went the other way mm. uh, the army said oh yeah we saw a plane going that way we did we did we, we, okay. <laughs> it was a plane lah I mean yeah. you know <laughs> it's like just <laughs> it just It just went lah. I know. think you and I should never do recaps for. <laughs> I just real. I'm just only realizing. No, this. no, but that's that's exactly what they said. No, 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 like, I know, no. But like for the people listening, I mean, uh, obviously you're listening to part two after listening to part one. Don't yeah. straight away jump part two. Don't be stupid lah. So okay, so then it went the other way, and uh, then they said, okay, you know what? Let's look this side now. You don't remember? Listen, listen to part one again. Give us the. <laughs> Give us the listens. Why not? Let's be shameless about this shit. Okay, then they decided. Okay, you know what? Still looking, looking, looking. Cannot find. Then they said, you know what? Sorry, lah, bro. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, lah. Okay, so now yeah. <clears throat> comes the other part where, on the evening of MH 370s disappearance, mm. Blaine Gibson. Wait, ah. Uh, mm. Sorry, you want to like? I don't know. I feel like uh-huh. the first time we're doing no one of the first times we're doing a three parter. Yes, okay. we've done two parters before. Yeah. Yes. So this is a part two. Two. Uh, you did the recap already. Yes. Is there a more like, you know, like a bit more like a gumpa way of just starting off the episode instead of like on the eve of like you want to say something like, like uh, wh- I don't know. No, no, no. Like give me a like you can't just say you want to say something. Okay. Like like <laughs> I uh, don't like a uh, and now. <laughs> For, okay. Oh, you know some shit. Okay, like, okay. Ah, okay, 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 okay. And now for part two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I disappoint you? I mean, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, nah. Listen, you gave me the words. I just said no, the, the words. No, the words were correct. It's your tone. <laughs> okay. Well, why? Why don't you do it? Huh? Why don't you do it? Ladies and gentlemen, part two of MH370. Okay. Cannot. Which no, I. No, no. I just felt like. Someone off the distance has to say like camera speed, sound speed. Oh, like that is it? Okay, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. And then you are like, do you know the clapper guy? Ah, uh, uh, like part two. What if I give Take you direction? One. What if I give you direction? Uh, okay, here's what I want you to feel. Okay. I want okay. you to feel like we are starting part two. The people who listened to part one, they waited one week. Uh huh. So then part two is starting now. So we're just doing the immediate cold introduction. Okay. 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 And. Uh, get that feeling. Get okay. That okay. Uh, 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 Take uh, a deep breath. Mm. Okay. Mm. And three, two, one, action. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the part two of MH370. You saw you're fucking crying, bro. Why? I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> you felt it now, sir. No, no, no. It was very BFM. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just. Very I just, BFM. Uh, yeah, correct. 
Okay. Do it. Do it in uh, fucking Joe's accent. Oh, Joe's accent. I thought you wanted to go Ezra Syed. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to. <laughs> That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's Ezra. Say. That's your Ezra. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the closest I can get. Okay, sure. Uh, if Joe would be like, I actually how? Uh? <laughs> that would be very deep, right? So be like, banging Farida American. Okay. All no. right. We need to. <laughs> BFM. Ah, uh, yeah. Eighty nine point nine. This is where the lawsuits come. <laughs> the lawsuits come from Joe, no, not from the government. <laughs> Yeah, you know okay, you know, Let's, on yeah. the evening of MH370, the disappearance, uh, Blaine Gibson was sitting in his late mother's house in Carmel, California. I I don't know why a, a place is named Carmel. It's called Carmel. Carmel, K A R C A R M E L. Like like how Americans pro, uh, pronounce caramel. Okay, I think at this point in age, uh, in our life. Uh, I think we should all as Asians just stop trying to figure out why white people do white people shit. Okay. No, no, that's understandable. You know what I mean? Like it's very hard to understand. But California also would be brown people, right? No, no, no. It's the, the, the names and all that. Bro, it's okay, US. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so. You can be any color, <laughs> but the correct color is white. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. You know correct. this, right? No, 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 100%. So, the, so he was sitting in his late mother's house in Carmel, California, sorting out her affairs to sell the property when he heard the news. A lawyer by trading, he lived on a modest inheritance. Sure. He lives on a modest inheritance. Everything there just sounds like more money than anybody here. Ah, uh, but the next next line is gonna gonna take you lah. Mm. Okay, a lawyer by training, he lived by a modest inheritance and dabbled in some famous mysteries. Okay. The end of the Mayan civilization in Guatemala, uh-huh. and Belize. Uh, the Tunguska meteor explosion in Siberia. Correct. Okay. And the location of the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia. Okay. So he's just a uh, he's a historian, lah. He he's no a historian about mysteries, lah. No yeah. historian actually is a person who 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 does history. Yeah, but like in all, Indiana Jones. Yeah, but it's all historical. Uh, Macha's a lawyer, lah. Macha. Oh no no no. Amateur historian. Ah, okay. okay. Amateur yeah. historian. He's not he Indiana also, Jones, lah. Uh, he's, no, no, no. he's, he's more I, like a. Uh, he's a lawyer for California. <laughs> okay. Indiana Jones. <laughs> he's Indian Jones. He's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not jumping from tree to tree with a whip and fighting Nazis. You know. No, no, no. He's not. Uh, Gibson printed up cards identifying himself. Okay. Okay. Adventurer, explorer, truth seeker. Okay. Ah, uh, this is like when me I printed out cards and said I'm the CEO of a company. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean you can essentially print out any card and say anything you want about yourself. Yeah, exactly. I I have a card now now that says uh you know company name and then uh in designation I put does things. Yeah. Because I do things. Ah. Uh. That's how. Um, Robert Rodriguez got a whole bunch of meetings and movies done because uh-huh. at, the, at the beginning when like you know just indie and people didn't know and you know Hollywood you need to know someone know someone you need to do yeah, some yeah, shit first yeah. right he just started printing out cards he just said filmmaker and just started giving people are you serious yeah uh, that's how he yeah apparently one of his quotes is if you want to be a filmmaker just say you are and just go and do lah uh, that's a good point. I mean, that that's the thing though. If you want to be a comedian, uh, just do lah. Uh, just do lah. Just do lah. Uh, There's no university course. Don't have. Nah, don't have. You just don't need come a and degree. Do, and then realize you suck at it, and then <laughs> just stop. <laughs> you see, like ad- adventurer, uh, explorer, truth seeker. What what be. qualifications you need? Ab- other than knowing those words, nothing. <laughs> Actually, even that. <dead. laughs> even that. <dead. laughs> Just Google Translate yeah. from Chinese. I like how this chap is probably just sitting at home, uh-huh. like you going through internet resources and books and shit. And then, oh, I'm an explorer. Mm. And adve- did he actually explore an adventure anywhere? Yeah, well, he did those things, lah. The Guatemala. No, did he go there or not? What am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Oh, he went. He there. went. He he went to because he got inheritance, right? Oh, he's ah. rich, lah. Modest inheritance. He's rich. Ah. He's he's white people poor, which Modest is quite rich. Modest inheritance is white people speak for rich. Uh, no, it's white people speak for. Can lah. He may, he he barely is hanging on. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, for white people lah. Oh, for white people. Okay. Uh, for brown people is like fucking rich okay. lah, bro. Okay. 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 Uh, I get it. I get it. So uh, he wore a fedora. Okay. So have I have, have I lost really, you? <laughs> yeah, you actually did. Yeah, he really, really wants to be Indiana Jones, lah. Yeah, and and the thing is, he well, he the the in the article it says. Did he have a whip? No. 
Yeah, I do. Want, do you want to win? No, he didn't say, but it does say that he wore a fedora like Indiana Jones. Okay. Ah, uh, but India is that a fedora or is that a hat? Hat. It's a fedora. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> the news arrived of MH370's disappearance. He paid attention. Oh, he was like, "This is my time, lah." Ah, uh, this is my time to shine, bro. To solve, okay. He sold his mother's house. Wait, sorry, ah. Uh, mm. These those three things, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, Guatemalan one, mm-hmm. the Tangaska one, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Ah, Ark of the Covenant. He he anything? basically did. He basically did the uh, fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay, lah. La. Did uh. he solve anything? Did he solve the mystery or not? He uh, did not say. Okay. He did not say. I'm gonna go on a limb here and say no. Uh, well, the Ark of the Covenant is still not found. No, but. The the prevailing theory is it is in a church in Ethiopia. It is is it? Yeah. Did they open it? No 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 no. Okay. <laughs> that's why that's that's why the theory lah. If they knew everybody would talk about now. Right? <laughs> the theory is lah, but then obviously it's still not found. But you know how over the years some theories gain more credence than others, some mm. more strong for for and yeah, thing. like the Shroud of Turin in a way. Yeah yeah yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the. Ark of the Covenant, mm-hmm. like a lot of people who do who who do research and all that, uh-huh. if if there is one place it could be, it'll be in a church in Ethiopia. That particular church in Ethiopia might be quite likely. Okay, fair enough. I I, I don't know. Maybe so, we'll do a bunch of an episode maybe, about that. But I don't know what this one is trying to solve, you know, because they don't let people in. So I don't know what. He, <laughs> so here's my question for people like this: uh. You can say you are. Okay. You are doing research. Uh huh. Maybe you go and you travel and you find out one or two new things. Uh huh. But generally, everything else is going to be stuff other people say already. Okay. So what actually are you doing? Anna? So he sold his mother's house <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and moved to northern Laos. He sold his mom's house. Yeah, fuck the mother. Okay. Mother, that's why the mother, mother died. Was, okay. Uh no, I think I think he yeah his mother passed away. Uh-huh. We is sorting through her affairs to sell her property when he heard the news. So he was sitting in his late mother's house. Okay, okay, but I mean, just don't sell a house, lah. So that was the inheritance, lah. He got the inheritance from the mother, and then the house, then the house also. So he sold the house okay. in Carmel, California, uh-huh. and then he got the money. So he moved to Northern Laos, lah, which is bloody like you know one one hundredth of the value. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you know he's he <laughs> bloody rich. He could buy Laos. Northern Laos. <laughs> I I don't know why he went to Northern Laos though, but out of all places, cheap, uh, uh, cheap. you just said it's cheap. It good good point, but he okay. So he wants to investigate MH370. Okay. So I moved to Northern Laos. Yeah. Instead of coming to Malaysia. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. Uh, where he oh, and oh no, his... I know why because he couldn't get through <laughs> my Malaysia second home. <laughs> <laughs> Occupation. Uh, Indiana I, Jones. <laughs> you know what? You go to Northern Laos. Bro, okay. You, you balik, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. So where he and his business partner built a restaurant on the Mekong River. Okay. All of this just sounds like white expat bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know where the mystery part is coming. I also don't know. He joined a Facebook discussion group. Sure. Dedicated to MH370 oh, because brilliant. you know that's where you get your information yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where you get proper, well-researched, peer-reviewed. Oh yeah, uh, opinions and all Pe- that. Right? It is peer-reviewed, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. if you put a status, okay. Oh, and then they were all peer-reviewed. Ah, yeah, like correct, you correct, know, you bullshit. What if <laughs> uh, all your peers are also stupid? No, that, it's still peer, right? Okay, they didn't that's, say smart no, peer, right? No, listen. That is the definition of peer. Okay. If it was smart, People you're not like my you. peer. <laughs> ah. Okay. okay, okay. So him and his dumb dumb group. <laughs> no, I okay. Wait, hold on. Let's let's not label him okay, a dumb okay, dumb okay, just okay, yet. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. I I I will admit I'm just I just don't like people on Facebook. That's okay, right. fair enough. Uh, it was filled with speculation, yeah. as you might this thing, uh, but also some insights into where the plane's wreckage might be. Okay, Gibson began to wonder if debris from the plane might someday simply wash up on a beach. Okay. Right, so in March 2015, a one-year commemoration of MH370's disappearance was held in a mall in Kuala Lumpur by the passengers next of kin. Okay, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. actually, I was there also. You were at the mall? Uh, yeah, because we were doing it. Uh, I was in Red FM at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, we did the MH370 one-year uh this thing, and I was there. And apparently, uh, Gibson was there too. Okay, Gibson attended, uninvited. Oh, okay. Raising a few, uh, no, no, nobody no, raised. No one. Why nobody would you? raised an eyebrow. Why would you interrupt? Yeah. <laughs> no, first of all, nobody raised an eyebrow. Yeah. Okay, because I was there. 
like everybody everybody was everybody was there like you know it was basically a it was just a vigil like a memorial like, like a memorial we had a you know a little this was which mural was tropicana mall i think it was tropicana okay. i can't i can't remember but i think it was tropicana okay. yeah uh, the principal speaker was grace subatirai nadan okay whose mother had been on the flight mm. uh, nadan is a criminal defense lawyer specializing in death penalty cases okay After a tearful and impassioned speech, he approached Grace, offering a hug. Mm. She accepted, for whatever reason, mm. and okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, and they became friends. All right. Okay. Gibson left the event determined to help by addressing the lack of coastal searches for floating debris. Okay. This, 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 I agree with. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Lack of coastal searches by whom, Mr. Kevin? Just so the listeners know. By the coastal people. Uh, of which country? Ah, uh, first of all, our country. Okay. Okay. Second of all, the country that you know the the debris washed onto. Okay. I mean, like you know, there, there there's a lot of places where it washed onto, and nobody is searching the 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 coast. Like everybody is just like, let's search the bottom of, of the, the ocean. ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. you know, we, we we hope for the best. Oh. Okay. In July to in July twenty nine, twenty fifteen. A municipal beach cleanup crew on the French island of Réunion. 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 Okay. okay, it's it's. I mean, I like the way again. Rakib had given me some pointers on how on to. On how to see. Ah, uh, mm. Rakib is killing it in yeah, this story. Yeah, little bit lah. No, so not, it's not just with the writing. Yeah. But also helping a dyslexic fuck <laughs> like you. No, it's okay. It's 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 written reunion okay. with a little accent on the e. Yes, yes, yes. So he said, just say reunion pretentiously. Oh, uh, that's correct, actually correct. Reunion. Okay. It is damn good. Yeah, right? I know. Bro, you can speak French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough. That's actually a word, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it means croissant. <laughs> French island of Reunion. Oh, sorry. French island of Reunion. Reunion. Uh, found a torn piece of airfoil about six feet long that apparently just washed ashore. Okay. Okay. The foreman, Johnny. Here we go. Here we go. No, no. He also put uh, this thing. So it's it's spelled B E G U E. B E with an accent on the first E. Big guy. No, he said just say big pretentiously. Big. Big. Yeah, Johnny Big. 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 Also, a French word for a person with a stutter. Weirdly enough. Okay. <laughs> Realize that it might be from an airplane. Right, because airfoil. Airfoil should be la. I mean, you know, it could come from a you port. know the modified uh, Honda Civic from uh, Sintul. That ended up in. <laughs> yeah, hey, sometimes Reunion. it flies away. Okay. Oh <laughs> shit! He was going that fast, bro. Oh, this after what? Wow, the speed bumps are terrible. <laughs> 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 you look at an F one. Like, <laughs> it could be from a Honda Civic from Central or an airplane. Because I've seen how these idiots in KL and all they drive on speed bumps. You know. Yeah. I yeah. It's actually a wonder why none of them have actually like taken off. No, no. I've seen. I've seen once lowered car, super like this thing. Riflo went on a speed bump. He left his uh, bumper. Oh, you, you, he left his bumper there. He, he just went home. Like, ah, just, I think at that point, no point to stop the car. Yeah, no point really. It's like I'll just get a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He briefly considered making it into a memorial, but instead he called a local radio station with the news because you know, I, I, hello, hits FM. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> I found a, I found an air foil. I found an air foil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He briefly thought of making it a memorial to what? To I to airplane? I don't know. It's it's just weird. Like how he uh, you, you find an airfoil and the first thing you do is hello hits FM. Ah. Uh, are you are you are you here for the okay, prank call? First of all, they said news radio, so it's uh. definitely not hits FM. Okay, so sorry, yeah. BFM. Ah, okay. <laughs> Please, we're talking about no. He said no. He said local radio station didn't say news. Oh, didn't say news with the news. Okay, I mean hits won't answer because it's not about. No, they'll answer. They will, trust me. It's not about. I've been on radio. All their calls are fake. If they get a real one, they're so bloody excited. Yeah, but a real one where it's not uh, tuned to kids and they cannot <laughs> laugh every three seconds about. No, it. they'll they'll answer lah. But oh, then they okay. will they'll be like, okay, thank you. Hi guys, I uh, I'm on I'm from a beach in reunion. <laughs> <laughs> So I found an airfoil. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, 
no, am I wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. You're hundred percent correct. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so he briefly considered making it into a memorial, but instead he called a local radio station with the news. Okay. Then a team of uh, gendarmes, gendarme, uh, paramil- paramil- paramilitary force. Okay. Uh, pa- sorry, paramilitary police okay. showed up and took the piece away. Okay, all right. So it felt like so happy. Called yeah. the radio station, and then suddenly when some MPs oh, come and like, yeah, okay, yeah <laughs> please. It was quickly determined to be the flapperon. Okay. Half flap, half aileron. Okay. Uh, of the Boeing seven seven seven. Okay. The serial number showed that it had come from MH three seventy. All right. Despite being 4,000 kilometers from the estimated crash site, uh, and one year later, it was fairly consistent with the debris drift simulations. Okay, so it was just very far away, lah. Yeah, 4,000 kilometers. I mean, that's like what Penang. 4,000 kilometers from where they thought it crashed. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that's like Penang. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I don't like how you're using Penang as a basis of how far it is, ah. Uh. Why? Because it wasn't found in Penang, idiot. Okay. <laughs> it's four thousand <laughs> kilometers away from where they thought. You know where's Reunion now, bro? You're talking that Reunion is like off the coast of Bangi Langkawi here. How do you know one person who was ever from Reunion? Yeah, no, we all know. Yeah, all hope that families of the MH370 victims had their loved ones surviving come crashing down in an instant. Okay. Right. Basically, you know, if they're hoping that Grace Nathan was devastated. Unable to function for weeks. Okay. Meanwhile, early in January, Gibson flew to Reunion okay. and found a friendly Johnny Bag on his beach. Okay. I like the way you say on his beach. Mm. Like, I, yeah, this is my. I so based on this, I'm going to assume everybody in uh, Reunion uh-huh. has their own beach. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, let's, I mean, let's just not research this at all. No, no. Say that's how it is, lah. Isn't that how this okay. works? Yeah. Okay. He showed Gibson where he had found the flapperon. Mm. They did a search, but no avail. Okay. Okay. The breed takes a long time to float across the Indian Ocean, okay. moving from east to west at the low southern latitudes. Okay. But flapperon, but a flapperon might arrive sooner mm. because faster. You know, the lighter maybe. Is that also why aerodynamic? Sure. Sure. No, Hi- I, no, uh, it's in water, I mean, no. Hydrodynamics. Ah. ah, why the plane go hydrodynamics? It's an aeroplane, not a hydroplane. I know. <laughs> there, I lawyered you. You're a fucking idiot, bro. No, last sometimes you don't know shit. No, it does hydroplane. No, no. Listen, if the if there's heavy rain in the airport, ah, uh, okay, when it landing, hydroplane. when it's landing, uh. it'll hydroplane what? No, no, is it a hydroplane? Because <laughs> no. it's an aeroplane. <laughs> okay. This is why. This is why. This is why. You know, three months we didn't do anything. <laughs> I just needed a break, guys. You, you now you realize. What you're talking about? All I know is I'm a scientist. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Parts of it could stick out, acting like a sail. That's oh, why. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. A reporter in Reunion. Oh, sorry. A reporter in Reunion okay. interviewed Gibson. He then flew to Australia. Mm-hmm. This is all on a on a modest inheritance. No, uh. this is look okay lah, fine lah. He's doing all this, bro. Yo, it's his money lah. Okay, okay. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit, it's not. He he then flew to Australia where he spoke with Oceano oceanographers. How bad do you think his business partner was feel <laughs> that he went and opened a restaurant in Laos we, uh, and his fuckers <laughs> going up and down he's like can you we understaffed you know we got no more prods we are, yeah we are a new restaurant <laughs> this restaurant is called prods uh, and we got no I need someone to go and buy the prawns where are you I'm in reunion <laughs> then I am <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, next week, next week you call me. Ah, uh, next, next week you call. Where are you? Australia. You pay punda. Can you come back? <laughs> Simply open up one business and then go Indiana Jones around the world. No, no, I think that's I. That's his front, I guess. The restaurant. Ah, uh, 
to get extra money lah. Into what extra money you gonna get in a, in a restaurant in a sure, northern Laos? Sure, sure, sure. I'm just saying. I just feel for his business partner lah. Honestly, lah. Maybe he knew, like you know, like it's not this like listen. You give me, you give me the money. Uh-huh. I'll do the business. You just you just you, go, you, you just go. Just go. You do, can you not be here? In fact. Oh, he didn't know. Okay, 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 okay. You know, you know how we, sometimes you have a business partner that for twenty four hours nagging in your face. No, yeah, he's constantly talking to this fella about all the mysteries in the world. Like, the, the, in fact, his business partner shut down the the restaurant. Took the insurance money and fucked I off already. <laughs> he's trying to prepare lunch, you know, all for the customers. Trying to get the drinks inventory and all this. Like, you know, last time the Mayan tried. Can, I, can you enough? Uh? <laughs> can you please go and do your engineer job, Chida? Cut the lemons, uh, please. <laughs> uh, so okay, so a reporter in Rionu okay. interviewed Gibson. He then flew to Australia, where he spoke with oceanographers, hmm. Patiarachi. Okay. And Commonwealth Scientific, what is Patiarachi? Oceanographers Patiarachi. Is that a name or I is that like an organization named Patiarachi? How is it spelled? P A T T I A R A T C H I. Patiarachi. Maybe. Okay. Anyway, and Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization oceanographer David Griffin. I think okay. No, it's a name. It's a name. Okay. Okay. We would like to apologize for anybody who's listening to this podcast, uh, our mm. fans. We would like to apologize for how actually uh, <laughs> dumb we are. Oh no, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Who was assigned to advise the ATSB on debris drift? Okay. Gibson wanted to know. Most likely location for floating debris to come ashore. Okay, they said that the northeast coast of Madagascar, and to a lesser degree, a coast of Mozambique. Okay, that's very far. No, that's like the uh, east coast of uh, Africa. So if you look at the Indian Ocean, it spans from Australia to the east coast of Africa. There's no, no, no. no land in between. No, what I'm saying is, mm. like, it had to go very far. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of ocean, you know. Remember, this is o- already more than one year. More than one yeah. year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gibson opted for Mozambique because he had not been there before. All right. <laughs> because you know, sure. like, hey, Mozambique, ah, uh, what, what are the chances of Mozambique? Maybe ten, fifteen percent. You know what? I haven't seen Mozambique. I'll go there. I haven't been there. Ah, uh. you managed to get a good deal on the ticket. Ah. <laughs> uh, Because he had not been there before, and he could and could bag it as the one hundred and seventy seventh country mm-hmm. that he wanted to visit. Okay, I mean, okay, I don't mm. say anything lah. Like, it's fine yeah. lah. Like, he's doing this on his own time, and also he's putting in his miles. Good way. Yeah. So he wanted to basically he, he wanted to catch them all lah. Sure. He wanted to go to all the countries. Sure, sure. I think there's hundred ninety three, if I'm not mistaken, countries in oh, the world. Oh, he's he's close. Hundred seventy seven is not bad. I mean, all on a modest. Or the modest inheritance. Yes. Don't forget. Uh. Yeah, don't forget. Uh, he chose a town called Vilanculos. Okay. Because it seems safe and had nice beaches. All right. Yeah. He got there February two thousand sixteen. Okay. Now, uh, Langwish, remember the 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 people the the expert from episode one. Correct. Okay. Said he asked for advice from local fishermen, mm-hmm. and was told of a sandbag. Called Paluma, okay. that lay beyond the reef, mm. uh, where they could collect nets and buoys washed from the Indian Ocean. Okay, okay. This is in Mozambique, lah. In Mozambique. Okay. Gibson paid a boatman named Suleiman mm. to take him there. Okay. Where they found junk. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to. Uh, Give that dramatic the, the, pause. The, the, that the, the, really wasn't no, necessary. Yeah. I build you up and break you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Suleiman called Gibson over and held up a triangular piece of grey scrap about two feet across and asked, "Is this three seventy? Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> bro, ask nicely, lah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I know. That's what it said in quotation. Yeah. Is this three seventy? Yeah. I mean, no, I get it. <laughs> yeah. But The scrap had a honeycomb structure and the words "no step" on its surface. Hey, what? Yeah, Gibson's first impression was that it could not have come from a large airplane, but he said that he wanted to believe. Okay. He said, "My mind was telling me it's not from the no. plane." No. 
<laughs> my mind was telling me no my, my body <laughs> but my fedora <laughs> <laughs> my mind was telling me that it's not from the plane <laughs> see now you can't unhear that shit right oh. yeah. but my heart was telling me that it's from the plane mm. then we had to take the boat back okay suddenly something of a miracle happened okay two dolphins what is happening right now two dolphins what the fuck happened to the story gavi i don't know <laughs> the i said well two dolphins appeared and helped us lead us off that sea bank sand bank sorry my mother's spirit animal what are you talking about now huh i'm very upset with where <laughs> the story just went ah huh? <laughs> wait la the dolphins hey the dolphins are helping ah huh? Okay, you two dolphins. So two dolphins appeared and helped to help lead us off that sandbank. My mother's spirit animal. When I saw those dolphins, I thought this is from the plane. The dolphins. No, I, 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 I the think the dolphins you, are from the. No, because you know how that sounds. Right? It sounds. Like, that's what he said. This is quote from him, right? But I think he meant the the triangular the thing, thing lah. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because two dolphins came and. So he saw two dolphins. What what does he mean the dolphins helped them get off the sandbank? They they get, got off the water. Uh, and then they, they lifted it. the they lifted the boat. Uh, they and, gave it a push lah. Uh, okay. They they, they were towed like, it back. Ah uh, yeah, they they had arms and legs. This was the Mozambican dolphin towing company. <laughs> <laughs> that came and fucking <laughs> What is this? We were talking about a serious <laughs> investigative story. No, look, he's found the thing. And you're bringing some Disney level <laughs> bullshit in right now, ah? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm so upset, you know. No, listen. So what happened was he saw the thing. He said, "No, listen. My my brain is telling me this is not from the plane, but the mind, uh, the heart, however, says no. I want to believe. I want to believe." And, and when he saw two, and dolphins, then he saw two dolphins, and they 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 basically were swimming. that way so they thought hey let's follow the dolphins and they got off the sandbank uh and sure. then he decided ah oh, this is my mother spirit animal i believe now i believe now i believe you see ah uh? uh. because he said miracle right uh uh-huh. let's say one or both of the dolphins uh uh-huh. had told him <laughs> okay <laughs> that this was from the plane as they were pushing the boat uh, yeah as uh, they were towing uh, because they you know the mozambique yeah, yeah, dolphin yeah, towing yeah. company because they agreed to the invoice ah uh, yeah <laughs> right if they told him if Three, the if th- the dolphin spoke and told him that uh, then i think i would be with you so i don't know you know mm-hmm. what now okay fine that's what the scrap from a horizontal stabilizer okay. was almost certainly from mh370 okay Okay. Gibson flew to the capital Maputo. I don't I just don't like the ooh. the dolphins only. Yeah, we are like kind of giving the dolphins credit for this shit. They deserve credit. They don't deserve anything for the story, ah. Yeah. <laughs> the dolphins, bro. They were just doing their job of towing boats. They got to go report back to their boss as a whale. <laughs> 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 Ah uh, yeah so so was most certainly from MH370 Gibson flew to the capital Maputo okay and handed the debris to the Australian consul right he then flew to Kuala Lumpur in time for the second anniversary commemoration okay okay so it's been a year already since uh, he came and did all this stuff. yeah so this time he was welcomed as a friend in June 2016 Gibson turned his attention to Madagascar This turned out to be the mother load. Mm. Okay, so he, he spelled out as L O D. No, no, correct. Mother load. No, and then in parentheses he say yes, this is how that spelled. Oh yeah, that was that's <laughs> weird. I know he knows me so he well. He knows you. He knows you, lah. He's my he he's my dolphin, lah, bro. He's your spirit animal. Yeah, Rakhi is your spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> Because I would be like, "Bad Lord, what the? If you don't know how to spell, what if it was a yeah? You of all people, Lord, yeah, I yeah. tell people don't know yeah. how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Because I would, Bad Lord is L O A D, like you know. Anyway, so <clears throat> Gibson says he found three pieces on the first day in Madagascar. In Madagascar, so he's fucking actually doing so much more work than our than anyone. Then that okay, not 
not just the our people who are supposed to do yeah. it's basically everybody else everyone okay. just basically everybody just gave up on this shit yeah okay good. and they were like you know I will show up la yeah 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 and this was like look i'm going to go no fight. i'm going to go and search yeah. yeah because wouldn't you think that would be the first thing other people would do they would, like they, pump in resources to go and search at least malaysian fucking airlines la the first person someone yeah no but you cannot about, find one indiana jones fan in malaysia huh? and then give him money to go and do this exactly one just one grab rider he did this from his own inheritance you know from his modest modest sorry modest, modest inheritance after selling his this thing and profits from a restaurant in north laos a bar restaurant <laughs> in laos <laughs> which may or may not have burned down for the insurance money no 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 it's still there they just don't know where he is this place now oh, this keep the severely understaffed cabin <laughs> Uh, they found three pieces on the first day and another two pieces a few days later you see this is what i'm talking about this is mm. if our first just put in fucking effort if they would have just showed up it wouldn't have turned up in 2016 you know we could have we had a head start exactly and people know because he obviously went to the oceanographers and, then and said look look here look here look here for this drift data right? yeah, yeah and they gave him two locations and both location they found something why nobody from here did this That's my own. did no one You really have think, to ask this question now. No, yes I do. I actually have to do. Why? No, do you really need the answer because it's staring no, at no, you I right the, in the face. I know the answer, uh-huh. but I need to ask the question. Oh no, I yeah, the, okay. the, uh, we uh. don't need to ask the question. The question needs to be asked from the people who actually give a shit. Yeah, la, but no one's asking. So what I'm saying is why so the question that that has arisen now arised yeah okay. why is it the entirety of this country for the mm. people who are in charge of doing all this couldn't have gone and checked with the oceanographers to be of, to be very honest with you yes i'm still thinking whether it's arised or aroused you continue the story like okay i feel uh, <laughs> if the next episode if we can get someone who can speak english we could laugh the following week on a beach 8 miles away three more pieces were delivered to them so let's let's do a count huh? so three in the first day a uh, few days later there's two and then it uh, uh, and then eight days later no following week another three pieces so there's eight pieces of the plane okay let's even say la ah. that this took two years for this to drift and mm-hmm. reach wherever it reached mm. okay none no malaysian agency had anything in place to say maybe keep looking every year maybe keep going maybe keep trying they couldn't give a flying toss no, but really or not no they couldn't like it it cost them money and let's face it but it's a national tragedy or as a country you should do what you they should do right they don't care because because they, it cost them money okay. dude they are modest inheritance malaysia's this, modest inheritance <laughs> yes malaysia's <laughs> modest inheritance does ah. not pay for this All right. Ah. Uh, wow. I was going to take this <laughs> conversation a whole different direction after you said that. We'll keep that for a different episode. Look, la. What? Why? Tell lah. No, 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 no. I was going to be like you, you, your use of the word. Go lah. Go lah. Continue. Continue. So anyway, uh, w- eventually word got around that Gibson would pay for MH370 debris. Sure. Difflers paying out of his own money. No, uh. good lah. He's doing what a, a, an actual country was supposed to do. Yeah. He even said that he once paid so much for a piece, forty dollars. Okay. Forty dollars a lot, huh? For for. Okay, lah. Fair enough. For for, for junk. Kind of for junk. Yeah. Uh, for junk. Yeah. Forty US. In yeah, forty US. Yeah. Because they have probably bought Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same 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 value as North Laos. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're getting a lot of complaints <laughs> from our North Laos and Madagascar <laughs> listeners. <laughs> uh that an entire village went on a day long drinking binge okay this sounds like my village la bro i need to go to where is this better guess car i can drink for an entire day on 40 dollars yeah the whole village can drink la no no i'm not sharing no no what i'm saying is for 40 dollars a whole village yeah can drink can go on a drinking binge yeah yeah so what i'm saying is i'll go there with 40 dollars uh-huh. i won't share Yeah, of course not. No, I no, think who is known you to share anything. Yeah, maybe, Feelings. Maybe okay, maybe I'll buy one. Though. No, fuck that. Okay, that one is okay. I don't think they have a bar. You know what I'm saying? They do have a. Good, they probably have okay, a tandang or something. Not that. Can you stop? Uh-huh. They probably have a tandang. I. It's a village, lah, dude. Uh, they will say, bro. Anybody from any Western world come to this part of the country? I mean, they, sorry. come to this part of the world uh, they look at anything and they'll say village uh, this is uh, apparently uh, rakib wrote here a note to to kiran yeah. it is noted that the local rum is extremely affordable 
I <laughs> does he have the address? <laughs> I I think you'll PM you. Things are opening up soon already. <laughs> Borders are opening up. Yes, Madagascar. Uh do look out for the uh, the lemurs though. The, I'll drink with them bro. I, 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 they, they, I'll share drinks with them. <laughs> Now what no problem. I want to move it move it. Uh Gibson has been responsible for finding roughly one third of the pieces thought to be from MH370. That is crazy. Man. Yeah. David Griffin though grateful worried that this may be statistically that this may statistically skew searches towards Madagascar at the expense of points further up north because you cannot with 100% certainty predict where it would have yeah. some could have gone here some could have gone there yeah. right okay but that's the thing you cast a wide net yeah and that's what he's doing is because he's hearing okay here got here got so he calls this the gibson effect because you know why not just Look, put your I name mean, on you shit you came this far if you want you did all this work you name it lah fine lah ah. okay but so far no one has been able to trace the debris back to a specific location in the southern indian ocean okay all right what gibson finds have confirmed that mh370 ping analysis was unfortunately correct okay. the fact that it turned back yeah right Uh there is still a chance Gibson thinks of finding the equivalent of a message in a bottle a note of desperation scribbled by someone on his or her last moments on the doomed airplane okay morbidly enough okay the closest he has come to finding such a note he says was a message written in Malay on the underside of a baseball cap translated it read to whom it may concern My dear friend, meet me at the guest house later. Uh yeah, but uh note Rakib says I could not find a picture of the actual baseball cap and who the fuck even writes things like that. Yeah, also maybe that might not have come from the maybe 70. maybe that's the thing. So Yeah, that one's that's way... No, but it was it was found with the debris, I guess, the baseball cap. Okay. So therefore maybe. yeah. I don't know. That one seems a bit It's a bit weird, lah. I have to, to say. To whom it may, may concern? Yeah. Uh, my dear friend. Yeah. Meet me at the guest house later. Yeah. No. 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 I don't want to get into this. That sounds yeah. too. No. 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 Let's let's focus on the science here. One of Gibson's collaborators is Jiang Hui, mm. whose mother was on MH370. He's been to Malaysia ten times, as well as Australia, Reunion, mm. Mauritius, Madagascar, and Singapore in search of clues. Okay. Now Jiang Hui is obviously Chinese. Okay. Uh he also managed to find a piece of debris that made from a honeycomb composite. A South China Morning Post video shows Gibson showing Jiang Hui holding a piece of wreckage he found as well. Okay. We spent 30 hours at the hotel. Nobody from the airline bothered to show up. Take Madagascar for example. There were plain debris lying there for almost 1 year. Nobody from Malaysia tried to come and pick it up. And all of this plain debris that he's found, he they, yes, they've catalogued it, and yes. it's all from three seventy. Yeah, right? nobody cares. Like uh, they call uh, Malaysia Airlines, they said, ah, "Sorry, no refund." Okay. Uh, so we went there and looked it, uh, looked into it ourselves when, in two thousand sixteen. Went to. Went they went to all these places. Okay, 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 okay. This is Jiang Hui speaking. By oh, Jiang Hui. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> While. Amazed at his luck, he felt anguish at the thought that families had to travel there to look for answers themselves. Jiang Hui claims Malaysian Airlines offered the settlement of three hundred thousand USD on the condition that the airline, Boeing, the Malaysian government, the military, and the civil uh, uh, aviation authority and airport were not held responsible. I mean, yeah, fucking corporations, right? He refused the settlement. Okay. Well done. Obviously. Like you know, why would you? Yeah. Why would you accept this? Yeah. It's basically saying, okay, we'll pay you three hundred thousand US dollars to yeah, shut the quiet. fuck up. Yeah, yeah. It's right? it's like it's 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 veering into like hush money territory. Oh yeah, this is hundred percent hush money. It's just basically saying, okay, we'll give you three hundred thousand, but you have to sign this document that says we are not responsible. Yeah, don't now. Don't, don't bring it up. Don't don't bring us into anything. Like kind of you thing. see, the thing is, I wouldn't have thought that. All these people are responsible to begin with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you giving me that fucking document now, I feel like maybe you're a uh, kind yeah, of responsible. I mean, no, which is why I said like like it's almost harsh money, but it's it's more of like 
okay we don't want to deal with this anymore yes yes so for us to not deal with this i give you this money but you don't anything whatever you think or you don't we are not we're, we're done la we're yeah. done with this uh, so illicit yeah. you take the money and then you just don't blame us for anything yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah okay like that would like that would heal the wounds of losing a family member no you know? way no way soon the possible theories of why the disappearance happened to be happen began to surface okay first were malfunctions or disasters all right there was shipment of lithium ion batteries on the plane on the plane suggesting a fire might have broken out much like the crash of flight ups6 in september 2010 Mm. So so they had a, a this thing it was it was on the news at that time that right. you know lithium ion batteries were on board and you know that there could have been a fire and blah blah blah. Mm. Uh so basically what they were saying was that because of the lithium ion uh, batteries being very flammable okay by right uh, they shouldn't be air flown in the first place. Oh okay. okay. So there was some safety risks and stuff like Better that. Better so, to ship them. Yeah, by because sea, it, because got water. Right? Yes, not only that, but also the fact that, <laughs> that if it, if there's a fire, it's more. Yes, no, no. You know this thing, uh, manageable. So basically, what happened was they said that the the smoke from the fire, everybody passed out. Okay, okay. So it went through the ventilation system. Ah, uh, and also burned out the electrical system. So they basically that's why the transponders all turned off. Okay. But there is problems with that theory. Because yeah, because the whole. All this stuff happened very quickly after it took off. Yes. Uh, Don't so, you think it would have taken no, a while the, for the f- batteries and all that? Because shit electrical happen? systems have backups. You burn one, there is another one. Okay. You can't burn both at the same time. Okay. It's it's highly unlikely. But then again. Weirder things have happened. We don't know. Okay. Another theory was an electrical fire, such as in the Swiss Air Flight One 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 in September second, nineteen ninety eight, which broke out above the cockpit and disabled both the transponders and satcom. Sure. Okay. Still, again, my question is: mm. it 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 happened not very long after the flight yes. took off. Yes. Yes. And let's say all this happened, lah. Mm. Why the turn back? Yeah, that that that's the no okay so the theory is that okay something happened right they got the alarms everything turn back to land turn back to land uh, to emergency land maybe they wanted to go to penang which was the nearest one so they turned back and then they just everybody lost consciousness and, and just, then just drifted off okay. but then there is also the oxygen mask yeah so then why didn't they put the oxygen mask taka they ran out before they 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 landed in penang there, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's a lot of things lah there's there is theories okay but we don't know okay right okay so cabin pressure failure was also suspected such as the greek helios flight uh, 522 in august 2005 however the pilots are trained for this event at emergency oxygen mask would have been deployed okay yeah Yeah. So basically, look. Every time a cra- okay. So this is how maritime and aeronautical law works. Every time something happens, we figure out what happened, and then we say let's train for this. Okay. Right. So every time this 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 happened, okay. we now we come to a point in 2020 or you know at that time 20, uh, 2014, everything is pretty much known. All the eventualities yeah. are taken yeah. into account, except okay. for one or. That basically freak accidents that yeah, yeah, you know yeah, happen. Yeah. Then we learn from it. Yeah. But in this case, this is all theories now because we don't have the okay. black box. But nothing, not none of these theories uh-huh. that they are putting forward now. Okay. Uh, uh, anything that they've not thought of before, right? These are all they have taken this into account. I believe so. Okay. But they've, then again, it cannot. They trained for more or less something like this. Yes, okay. yes. But well, also the fact that look, we can come up with theories, but at the end of the day, nobody knows exactly what happened correct, because correct. we haven't found the plane, nor have we found the black box that will tell us what happened. But also, I remember from last episode, you told me the black box they used the batteries were expired. Right? Correct. I uh, still. Are we going to get back to that at any point in the story? Because wait, wait, I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I have opinions on uh, that. Uh, but language. Uh, states that most experts believe that the disappearance of MH370 was intentional. Okay. Natural disasters or or system failures don't really account for its bizarre flight path. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? So, American electrical engineer Mike Exner studied the radar data and believed that during the turn over South China Sea, the plane climbed up to over 40,000 feet. This would have pushed the passengers back to their seats and possibly depressurized the cabin fast enough to cause rapid death or incapacitation in the cabin within minutes. Oh, shit. Okay. Right? The rendering of emergency oxygen masks useless. So, when they say cabin, even the if it, if, well, it, if it turns off, if let's say, let's say lah, if someone turned off the the cabin pressurization this and thing just and went just up. went yeah, up yeah, yeah. so the 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 air density would reduce so Correct. much that you find it hard to breathe and even if you put oxygen masks is no point no what i'm asking is that would have happened to everyone on board yeah, including just, the cockpit right the cockpit however had four pressurized oxygen masks linked to the uh, okay. linked to our supply okay okay so theories turn to hijackings okay All right, I I don't know if you heard the news at that time, but two men boarded MH370 with stolen passports. That one I did not know. Ah uh, yes, there were two men, uh, but investigators could not link them to any terrorist groups, and they concluded that they were actually seeking asylum. So there was this two Russian, if I'm not mistaken, it was Russian. I I cannot remember, but uh, there was two guys. They, they it basically used fake passports, right? So they w- went through uh, Malaysian uh, immigration, went through. They went on the plane, mm. and then the plane went missing, and then they started looking at the documentation, and there were two passengers that basically they thought, okay, this is fake mm. passport because they couldn't find the passport number. What is the point of passports if people can fake and use it? <sighs> no, what's the point of immigration lines? Yeah, like you know, you know, like <laughs> I do. Have you ever used a fake ID before? No. Okay, I have, yeah. but the reason why I had a fake ID was because I was 17 in the UK, okay. and I wanted to drink. Okay. Right. So when we went to the club, I it, thought the drinking age in UK is at twelve. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's Scotland. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. No, Scotland. Scotland minimum drinking age is birth. It's birth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're born in Scotland. The doctor gives you a bottle of fucking single malt straight. Correct. Right. Correct. It's a Glen something. Ah, uh, okay. it's a Glen. Why, why? Baby's first Glen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Yo, I want a baby's first gland now. That's actually fucking cute though. <laughs> uh so yeah, so they, they, but eventually the investigations this uh they did investigations on the guys and basically they found nothing. They couldn't find links to any terrorist groups. They couldn't find links to anything. They were just passing through. Okay, right? They were going to China for some strange reason. I don't know why though. Or with fake passports. With fake passports, but they, they, it okay. seems like they were just seeking asylum, lah. Okay. Or mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but spies. <sighs> why? Why? I do, mean, bad why do you want? Why would anyone want to spy in Malaysia? Again, you, you like don't, you don't know, how, bro. You're telling me this country don't have shit we don't know. <laughs> no, no, there is a lot of shit we don't know. But ah. the only problem is that we find out we are more disappointed than. Ah, yeah, lah, yeah. No, <laughs> the problem. <laughs> so this is those countries put your problem, lah. <laughs> they come and spy here <laughs> and then they find out, oh, you're fucking lame, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they <laughs> find out like. They they want to find out like trade secrets. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. find out more corruption. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> they're like oh, oh Diffler took money. Diffler took money. Ah, you know what? I, and if these were Russian spies, they could like for this amount of corruption, I could have stayed at home, bro. I think they were Russians if I if I remember okay. correctly. Okay, I okay. I can't remember though. So uh, I don't know. So okay. So their first thought was terrorism, and no one even bothered to check for espionage. No, uh, wait, wait. I think there was something in there also. Okay. Reuters also reported Malaysian authorities were initially looking into one of the passengers who was a flight engineer who might have the necessary skills to pull the hijacking off. Okay. Okay. However, Malaysian, Chinese and FBI investigators cleared all passengers and cabin crew of suspicion. Okay. On top of that, no no individual or group had claimed responsibility. ATSB head Martin Dolan noted usually terrorists like comedians claim credit for their event. Okay, Rakim, <laughs> I bastard. Ah. <laughs> Say the line again. ATSB head Martin Dolan noted that usually terrorists like comedians in parentheses claim credit for their event. Okay. No, no, well played, well played. Yeah. Wow. Well played. Wow. No, but one. here's the thing, though. Like, like. <laughs> Terrorists will claim. Yeah, yeah. 
even if they didn't do sometimes they'll be like yes i did it yeah and then and then another group will say no no actually it was me <laughs> yeah, yeah actually no no it was me it was, it was me it was me it was yeah. me okay so no, yeah nobody I, clipped I, it I, it doesn't sound like no a, but they at least at least one thing about uh you know terrorist groups is that they have more uh credibility than uh malaysian airlines right now in terms of like account- taking credit yeah because they didn't do accountability yeah accountability yeah yeah because okay. they say we didn't do i'm sure somebody would have called al qaeda and say hey did you all do this no, no the moment this not us no the moment things like this happen if around mistake and all the agencies in the world be like okay is anybody yeah, go yeah. And check the yeah no internet. somebody would have picked up a call and said like hey boko haram chatter la you ah. know like who did what who did uh, what? no i'm sure i'm sure they called uh, boko haram you did ah uh, no okay i don't okay. think they... uh, hello uh, is uh, al qaeda no okay uh, if, if interpol as a line to boko haram bro <laughs> you trying to try and tell me cia does it a direct line to uh, no la bro cuz they la. won't be around la come on la okay okay see this the pro- this you too naive okay you <laughs> i want to watch this by <laughs> according to scmp a third party hijacking was unlikely anyway okay. as the cockpit was reinforced electrically bolted and had a security camera the pilots could see mm. only 2 minutes passed between zahari's good night and the loss of transponder signal a tiny window of time for a hijack yeah yeah so it's very difficult la it's like they can't like blah. how how blah. that's your impression of a terrorist uh, no okay. a very quick terrorist oh a quick a, a fast one ah. okay uh, so the only suspects left were the pilots In Ethiopian flight 702 in February 2014 all the all the co-pilot had to do was wait for the captain to take a bathroom break before taking over the plane and flying towards political asylum in Switzerland one odd detail from a leaked Royal Malaysian police report which we will which we will mention later apparently uh, was first made Farik's iPhone 5s establishing an automatic location signal with a cell tower as the plane passed in Penang Island why this detail was left out in public reports is completely unknown so after everything went dark uh uh-huh. the iphone made a connection with penang tower as it flew over penang yes and it was never made public uh, this was only find out then, later then then wait then why the fuck they said go search this other direction all they were like we don't know where we don't know where it it went uh-huh. here why dg would have told them you know okay. <laughs> that's not <laughs> uh, bro <laughs> dg would never have seen her bro right? okay <laughs> no i didn't think dg bro okay Come on ah huh? let's be realistic here No 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 you make a very good point The uh, only one that can get signal that high at a place where no one else will go is you and I know which one It's fucking Selcom Yes 100% Selcom the only one where you have signal where people actually don't go in a jungle know. like uh, why do I have signal what the yeah, hell But then you, <laughs> you go If you're on Maxis you can be next to the tower no signal uh, huh? no, yeah. I was in Maxis center no I swear to god no signal yeah, no signal yeah 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 Uh and then there was Captain Zahari and his beloved flight simulations we spoke about the flight simulations earlier uh i think i remember them posting photos of his flight simulator rig after all this yes yes oh it was it was it was amazing yeah, yeah. the one of the best rigs i've seen uh as early as june 2014 Uh, several news reports identified captain zahari as the main suspect in the disappearance of mh370 this was left out by the malaysian government's report on mh370 mm-hmm. if you if you've ever watched uh malaysian coverage of mh370 no mention of uh, captain okay. zahari they, okay. they he was never he was never a suspect but outside outside of malaysia he was yes okay. yes i mean he was the main suspect because no other theories fit nothing else kind of made sense at nothing that point else, yet nothing else the okay. only thing was someone switched everything off and flew off and just basically crashed the plane okay right So in 2016 a New York magazine report stated that FBI recovered six deleted data points that were stored in Microsoft Flight Simulator X just weeks before MH370 vanished. Flight Simulator 10 gun. Sorry? Flight Simulator 10. Flight Simulator 10. Sorry my bad. It's a common mistake. Okay. Sure. Each point records the virtual airplane's altitude, speed, direction and other key info. 
These contain flight path simulations that suspiciously ended in the south of the Indian Ocean. The simulated flight path differed somewhat that it goes straight from KL through the Straits of Malacca and between Nicobar Islands before turning sharply south at the Bay of Bengal but is the same that it proceeds to the South Indian Ocean where it goes past the Seven Arc. So, instead of going to Vietnam and turning back, yeah. this flew went, went KL here, and, then and, and then Bay of Bengal and then turned down. Okay. Right? So, it was pretty much similar but not quite. It was only then that the government admitted to the existence of the simulations. Okay. This was two years later, uh, by the way. So, I think the pattern here is... Ah. Uh, Malaysian authorities don't say anything. No, they will just deny, deny, deny. Somebody else says something first. Ah, maybe. Then only they say. Then oh, they yeah, like, actually got. Yeah, actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, we forgot. Okay, this ah. is this is this is brilliant uh, responsibility on a country's part. Hundred percent. Right? Very good, lah. However, the originally deleted data was only rebuilt by separate waypoints found on the simulator and there was no evidence to suggest that the waypoints were used in the same simulator flights. So instead of actually logging that flight, they had waypoints. Oh, but, but okay. So they're saying that, oh, the waypoints are the same, but there is no actual evidence that, that he actually he, used that. He used that in the simulation. Yes, la. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, because you can just log waypoint. Yeah. You don't have to fly there. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. It's like you know when you when you play game. Yeah. And then you want to go from this end to this end, but you don't know the way. Mm. So you look at the map and then you put the waypoints and then you go to the waypoints and then I you end know, up bro. there. I don't play games. But I'm not a fucking nerd like you. Get a life, lah. <laughs> this is me saying this, <laughs> la. Yeah, I, know. I felt I felt like I was gonna burst into flames saying that. No, I, I was just gonna take your my uh, your switch. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, sorry. Don't tell the audience <laughs> <laughs> that I'm still playing Pokemon. <laughs> NIMAG states that the difference between the simulated and actual flights are significant. Okay. Most notably in the final direction where they headed. Okay. It is possible that Zahari didn't intend this flight simulator as practice run, but merely just been messing around on it. Sure, I mean, did you see the rig? I mean, at the end of the day, it's a video game, like yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, I want, I want that rig now. No. I want. There's a part of me that wants a rig like that. Yeah. But to play those old, you know, those space simulation games like Wing Commander and all oh, that. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, no, that that's exactly like you know the, the the like you have to have three screens, right? And then you this thing, and then the uh, yeah. The, the they they actually have like the the planes control panel yeah the actual like, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i've seen i've seen i've seen i've seen welcome to macha man discuss gaming for everybody <laughs> how are we going to discuss this i don't know i don't know <laughs> so does cid the does the cid's report chose to not draw into that conclusion okay i mean okay and the report remained un- inclus- inconclusive However, these findings did in fact influence Australian search efforts as the possibility of the early ditching or prolonged flight past the death dive scenario. Okay. But Langweish claimed of all the profiles extracted from the simulator, one that matched MH370's path was the only one that Zahari did not run continuously like a normal flight. Instead, he advanced the flight manually in multiple stages repeatedly jumping the flight forward, subtracting subtracting fuel as necessary until it was gone. Thus, the prevailing theory is that Captain Zahari might have essentially run amok and hijacked the plane himself. Based on the simulation that Based he on the simulations. just kept going and going yeah. and going until the... Okay. MH370 analyst Victor Iannello believes that Zahari was responsible. There was nothing technical that Zahari could have learned by rehearsing the act on the simulator. So, Yanelo suspects that he might have been leaving breadcrumb trail to say goodbye. However, Clive Irving, writing for the Daily Beast, said, had Zahari really wanted to disappear in the jet, he would have not made the sudden turn to the left, but to the right, flying over the South China Sea. Yeah he could have quickly slipped beyond any radar, radar coverage. Uh, instead, he headed into airspace covered by 
overlapping radars based in Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand and Indonesia, mm. as well as their air forces, which could have shot down a hijacked plane. Mm. We all know that they didn't do. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, no emergency landing attempt was made even after the flight passed over at least two possible emergency landing airports, as mentioned before, in Penang and uh, uh, I think in Indonesia. Mm. Such cases has happened before, namely with Silk Air 185 in 1997, Egypt Air Flight 990, Lam Mozambique Airlines Flight 470 just months before MH370, and German Wings Airbus that was deliberately cla- crashed into the French Alps in March 2015, a okay. year after MH370. Okay. Uh, but in Silk Air 185 and Egypt Air 990, Singapore and Egypt both rejected conclusions that the crashes were pilot murder suicides. While mm. in German Wings case, pilot Andreas Lubitz had a record of depression and in was investigated later and discovered he actually studied MH370 a year prior. Okay. Langweis also said that the plane disintegrated into confetti when it hit the water. But this is somewhat contradicted by the solidarity solidity of the pieces of debris that have survived. Yeah, because what this Gibson found like like pieces like, like actual like one third what? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean not one third of the plane, but one, one third, third of, of the, the debris. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but no, but the thing is, it wouldn't have disintegrated disintegrated yeah. into it wouldn't have vaporized lah. Yeah. Is what he's saying is the pieces will still be. I mean, obviously, the fittings each fittings will 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 break apart. But you can find like a whole wing piece. It would take a lot for a plane to disintegrate, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, but we, as we know from the previous episode, when the plane is dropping, it increases speed. Ah, okay. Because the the air okay. density, blah blah, blah and all this. So yeah. <laughs> However, it could happen if Captain Zahari glided the plane instead of diving it. Mm-hmm. The search would have been wider. With the present government budgets and the search would almost be impossible. Okay. Hadi thinks that it's more likely. And during the episode of sixty minutes, Aust- Australia, he runs the simulator to demonstrate an almost effortless glide out of the death dive scenario from thirty thousand feet, that adds almost hundred nautical miles to MH370 search area. Oh shit! So that would have made the uh, they would have had to search. A bigger yeah okay okay wow hundred miles hundred nautical miles which is about hundred eighty kilometers okay uh, Larry Vance Canadian flight accident investigator also points out that the flaperon discovered by Gibson also had jagged edges meaning that it was scraping the surface of the water as it was lowered a thing that only a pilot can do manually so it was. Okay. Yeah. Vance theorizes that the plane did not, in fact, run out of fuel on its dive since lowering the flaps would need some fuel left on the plane to power itself. Yeah. So if you if you dive manually, you will need some fuel. Fuel also acts like uh, hydraulics on the okay. flaps. Vance notes that the depressur- depressurization of the airplane when the transponders were off. After the left turn over the South China Sea, there is no reason not to believe that's what the pilot did ah. because that would be consistent with everything else the pilot did. Okay. Vance Hardy and global air safety specialist John Cox, all speaking to 60 Minutes Australia, agree that the plane likely glided into the ocean and that the debris is in large chunks under the ocean. Okay. Okay. Dolan defends his decision to focus ATSB search. Near the death dive scenario area, but all experts were of the opinion that, all things considered, there were too many coincidences that would have ha- need to happen to make an MH370 strange detour a result of an accident or a catastrophe, which is true. I mean, think about it. What accidents? Like it would have to be like a series of this happened. Oh my god! Then this happened. Oh my god! Then this happened. Like a series of unfortunate events yeah. to lead to the whole scenario. Right. Because you 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 can you see like okay like electrical fire in the in the cockpit. Okay, transponder gone, radar gone. Pilot still okay. He mm. can still you know uh, turn and land the plane. Okay. Let's say the wing flaps. Uh, no. Uh, what uh, fire? All the crew uh, got uh, incapacitated. 
pilot still got oxygen, oxygen like yeah. why didn't like th- there's always a rebuttal and so n- what they're saying is if it was an accident mm-hmm. a series of accidents mm-hmm. you'll always have those contingencies and and when each contingency didn't work yeah then so now they have to look at intentional la. yes okay So Simon Hardy also theorizes that the final tilt of the wing towards Penang might have been Zahari's looking out the window to say a final goodbye to his hometown. Okay. A bit romantic lah but you know okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, now So it went into a death dive. Mm. But instead of doing that death dive and straight going to the water He went to Penang first to say goodbye. No, 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 no. So they're saying death dive, but instead that he actually managed to activate the flapperon things to glide a bit more. No, no I mean because yeah. of this. So, so it, basically, he so w- instead of it death dive is going straight down. Ah, uh-huh. it went down. But like it lost altitude, but then mm. it. It's like landing somehow. on the water, lah. Okay. Ah, uh, but at full speed. Okay. So that would just disintegrate okay. disintegrate the plane. Okay, okay. So this is all just a technical part because the whole time I'm listening to the story, all I'm thinking is like, why? Here's why. But if Captain Zahari was responsible for the crash of MH370, his motives remain vague at best. In Zahari's case, the official report stated that he had no known history of anxieties or neuroses. And there were no recent changes to his behavior or lifestyle. Airport CCTV footage revealed no behavioral patterns change, and his appearance was normal, well groomed, well clothed. Langwaj, however, dismisses the official report after he allegedly speaking with the acquaintances in Kuala Lumpur. His article claims that his wife had moved out and was living in their second home. Okay. By Zahari's own alleged admission to his friends, he spent a lot of time pacing empty rooms, waiting till the next flight. He was also supposedly a romantic. Mm-hmm. One account alleged he was in a relationship with a married woman with three children, one being disabled. Mm. He also left Facebook comments on pictures of a young internet model that elicit no responses. Okay. He was supposedly in touch with his children but they had flown the nest already. Some investigators from the in, from the av- aviation and intelligence community speculate that he was probably clinically depressed. Okay. In Kuala Lumpur language But none of this is confirmed, right? None of this is confirmed obviously, but you know this is what in intelligence and investigation sure. uh, show. Uh in Kuala Lumpur language claimed to meet with one of Captain Zahari's lifelong friends a fellow 777 captain whose name was omitted from the Atlantic article. Mm. It doesn't make sense. It's hard to reconcile with the man I knew, but it's the necessary conclusion. This is his friend saying it. Okay. Language asked about Zahari needing to deal with the first officer Farik Hamid That's easy. Zahari was an examiner. All he had to say was go check something in the cabin and the guy would have gone. Okay. And then locked the he could come in. When asked about motive, the pilot said he had no idea. He mentioned Zahari's marriage was bad. In the past he slept with some flight attendants and so what? We all do. Okay. I mean, you don't need to Yeah. The, You're flying all over the world with these beautiful girls in the back, but his wife knew. He agreed that this was hardly a reason to go berserk, but thought Zahari's emotional state might have been a factor. Okay. Okay, but in an interview with the Seattle Times, Zahari's sister Sakinab Shah said that it was very convenient to make Zahari the scapegoat to absolve the airline's claims to protect Putrajaya from possible cover ups and boeing from losing business mm. after the 737 max debacle they would have anyway mm. sakinov said zahari was his normal happy self when she saw him at dinner 2 weeks before mh370's flight the siblings were close and their gatherings were boisterous and cheerful at her house okay sakinov notes that she and zahari had planned to go on a month long trip around italy before the events of MH370. Mm. There was speculation that the crash might have been politically motivated. As mentioned before, Zahari was an ardent supporter of Anwar Ibrahim. Okay. 
who was sentenced to five years in prison on sodomy charges mere hours before the flight took off. But Sakinab and Zahari were merely an ordinary member of Pakata Harapan. Okay. So, chances are it's not lah. Nobody seems to know anything. This is not just. This is just not possible. They have found water on Mars, yet they cannot locate this huge plane. Mm. She said, "This is the sister speaking." Mm. So that is the end of part two. As I said, okay. Uh, okay. you were expecting it to get better. Ah, I had my reservations. Yeah, and so yeah. The more you hear about this, the more you 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 uh, realize that mm. the people in charge were supposed to to do their work to find out why it happened, what happened, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems to be doing a very Malaysian thing. Of course, which is, mm. uh, don't want to do the work you're supposed to do, lah. I think I think we mentioned this in in episode one. Mm. This look, we all know the incompetency of the Malaysian government. Yes, we all know. Yeah. Like we expect this. Yeah, much of incompetency, but that one time. Yeah, the one time where we needed y'all. We needed to y'all like, to get your fucking act together, and just like and just sort it out and give answers. So I remember an article came out i don't know when it came out it might have been a year after or a few years after or around that time or something from another publication outside of malaysia lah mm-hmm. right and the the point of the article was it was basically saying something like this is really not something malaysia is used to where something happens and they have to provide answers because yes. they said politically and 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 governmentally and the way this country is is that the government ref- doesn't it thinks that it doesn't need to give people answers yes. for anything yes and the thing is that one time that we just hey can you just like just be normal for one day yeah this is just the one of the biggest recent examples of Uh, the Malaysian government just mm. doing whatever the hell they want. Exactly. Right. It it essentially comes down to that. Yeah. Something happened. We do what we want. You don't ask a lot of questions, lah. Correct, lah. Correct. So yeah, lah. Uh, fucking good, lah, bro. This country. <sighs> And we still have part three to, to go get to. A guy who's essentially Indiana Jones cosplaying <laughs> 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 around the southern hemisphere to, to do, do the work for them. Yes. Jinx. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it, it's so frustrating that My no God. look okay lah. Malaysian government doesn't want to do fine. At least Malaysian airlines like spend some money My to find out what happened to your plane. God. But they can't even find out. They couldn't even find out where what. No search. No no prolonged search efforts properly. Don't give me this bullshit about the the resources and the budget. And the modest uh, inheritance. You want to do, you can do lah. Exactly. It, I mean, if a private I'm not asking you to spend like like two billion a day or whatever, but you want to do, you can do. Like yeah, we no do something exactly. In, instead of spending on wildfires, yeah, yeah, do something. No, that one also they didn't do, and then it came to okay, fine, it's intentional, and then they now want to. Now we all cannot say for sure. I I don't I don't know what mm. I I really know what the fuck's going to happen with Patria, bro. I very <laughs> you are you are so drained. Like I can see you, though. You're like you want to make I've this. Been, you you want to make this funny, but you cannot. And I know this. I don't think I've been like this for any match, man. Yeah, I know. And the, the the worst part is like I'm feeling to myself like I want this to be over already, but no, there's a part three. There's more things. God, what the? <laughs> <laughs> you will find out lah in a minute. Oh, okay. For the people listening, they'll find out in a minute lah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, they'll find out <laughs> the week after this. Right? Yeah, we'll see. Oh. Ah. Are you telling me people might get two back-to-back episodes? No, no. Of the no, 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 no. <laughs> First of all, we have to record that episode. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. No, I don't know what thoughts I will. I will have thoughts. I think at the end of part three, lah. Let's just say that. I, I, you know what? I'm not holding out a candle, lah. Yeah, it's so hard for me to, because we all heard the 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 when this came out, mm-hmm. and they said, okay, yeah, it was it was pilot error, pilot intention. And yeah, trying to say it was him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, 
Yeah, this what's so frustrating nobody knows nobody knows because everything every theory every theory has another theory that says maybe not yes right yes because when i mean you go for electrical failure there is always a backup there's something else they could have done yeah. uh if you go for uh you know fires that incapacitated everybody it's, it has to be a series and some people were saying he was fine some people yeah. were saying and also fine. when you so go to the pilot this thing then you have motive like some people say oh no his wife left him blah 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 and all this and no but that one argument was correct mm-hmm. which is if he wanted to do this intentionally mm-hmm. for whatever personal reasons lah okay mm-hmm. why case, make it so extravagant is, why the turn back yeah he could have just just crashed remember this it goes south china sea and yeah. there no radar nothing yeah like why the, the yeah turn back? why the, to say goodbye to binang Okay. Like no. I feel like that's way too much drama. No, no, no. That one is it, it, that seems too convenient of a reason. Yeah. Well. Uh okay lah, good lah bro. I'm <sighs> going to go cry for a bit. Uh I I can I use your shower? No, we cry together. <laughs> okay. In the shower. In the shower, okay. And then um, close then, optional. Yeah, thanks guys for listening. We will see you all um part 3. Part 3. Uh please please uh I mean thank you for all the feedback. for the first part of this uh, uh, people we, are crying you know like where is part 2 we really <laughs> really enjoyed it um also guys please don't forget to share um, like and subscribe shut up <laughs> oh. <laughs> to share this podcast with your friends uh, share the the matcha man instagram page also because we put everything up there so it'll be easier to know how many of y'all are listening how many yes. of y'all like know what y'all think um yeah just share like and comment there la and, mm. and and talk talk to us there it'll be nice to talk to yeah. you all also and if you all have trouble with spotify and uh where you know maybe sometimes it's hard to listen on spotify yeah if you're using dg uh, <laughs> there's also youtube now which you can listen to uh there's also uh, uh you can go to kavinjay.com uh i have a widget there, there yeah. that that works as well mm. so yeah you can listen to quite a few places lah so get ready ah for part 3 of right. the depressing akmila <laughs>